Hello, everyone. Welcome back for another episode of Owning Your Sexual Self. Happy 4th of July week, if you are listening to this in real time. If not, I hope you had a great 4th of July. I wanted, I've been having this episode on my mind for quite some time, this idea of sexual freedom. And here we are, we're recording a podcast about it. (laughs) I am, I'm excited because this is something that I think is so important for people, this idea of sexual freedom. So we're going to dive into what, what it is, how to embrace it, how to break down those societal norms that is holding you back from feeling sexually free in your body and in your sexuality. And yeah, I'm here for it. This is, and I guess I will consider this a a holiday special, if you will, since it is, uh, again, 4th of July week and we're, we're celebrating Independence Day here in the States. So first, I wanted to start by giving you a definition of what sexual freedom is. And after doing some research, this is what I've came up with. Sexual freedom refers to the concept of individuals having the autonomy and the ability to express their sexuality without fear, shame, or judgment. It encompasses the idea that individuals have the right to make choices about their own sexual lives and experiences free from societal, cultural, or legal restrictions. Sexual freedom promotes the idea that consensual and non-harmful sexual activities, preferences, and identities should be accepted and respected. It recognizes that diversity in sexual expression is natural and should be celebrated without discriminate, discriminate, oh my God, discrimination or marginalization. So just to give you this idea of what sexual freedom is, it is, in short, it is feeling alive and being able to express that sexual aliveness without shame, fear, guilt, anything standing in our way. And this is something that this is not something that you can just boom, snap of the finger. It's not going to just take listening to this podcast. It's not going to take doing one coaching call with a sex coach. This takes time. This is a process. And what I have found in my own experience of living sexually free, you're, you're going to have instances in your life where things are showing up. Things are projecting to you things are challenges are arising that are going to essentially make you check yourself you know in my own personal experience with this you know with when it comes to sexual freedom a part of this for me is talking openly about pleasure talking openly specifically about my pleasure so when I, when i've been late for things like sorry i'm late i was masturbating or you got here just in time i just finished <laughs> masturbating you know like it, having these conversations and this is one of my goals in life is to make talking about sex as normal as talking about the fucking weather that is that that is it that in a nutshell that is what i'm here to do and So part of me embracing my sexual freedom is being able to speak openly about pleasure, about experiences, being able to embrace that, being able to embody pleasure on a day-to-day basis without, again, thinking, what what is my dad going to think? What is my mother-in-law going to think? What is my grandma going to think? What is my best friend going to think? What are my coworkers going to think? And in my time in this field, I, I, I have to say, like, I've gotten, I've gotten pushback. I've gotten questions. What are you doing? How can you, how can you talk so openly? How can you show yourself in lingerie on social media? How could you have an OnlyFans account? Like, how could you do these things? How could you, right? Like that, that phrase in itself is so shameful. How could you? And, you know, a few years back, I came to this conclusion of why not me? Why not me? If if there's anybody in this world that's going to live sexually free and be a spokesperson, if you will, for the feeling of sexual freedom, why not me? Why why not? <laughs> if anybody has the answer to that, please please let me know. But sexual freedom can lead to just so much in-depth personal empowerment and growth for a person. In my experience, again, and what I help other people with, 
in tapping into their sexual freedom, tapping into their sensuality and, and being able to express that. I can't tell you how much that overflows into the rest of their life. Because what I have found that when we can have conversations around sex and sexuality, and when we can be vulnerable with our partners, we can essentially talk about anything, whether that be within our relationship or not. So when you get really, really, really good at talking about sex and you have this openness and you have this container and this space that you can do so freely within your partnership, that makes talking about finances easy. If jealousy comes up into the relationship, that that becomes an easier conversation to have. Like sex is is really at at so many people's core the hardest thing to talk about because it is so taboo in our society even still today in 2023. There are just so many societal norms and and things that that tell us that we should not be talking about this. We we shouldn't have these conversations. We, women shouldn't talk about masturbation or pleasure, or women shouldn't be taking so much time for self care, putting themselves first before their children. You know these things. So, but what I have found when a woman or a man, but primarily I work mainly with women, when a woman can feel into her femininity, feel into her sensuality and really embody that and embody this power that comes with it. She starts to show up differently in her friendships, in her family, in motherhood, in sisterhood, in her job. She shows up differently. And that, you know, I'll talk, talk, I'll call it what it is. It's pussy power. It's tapping into this power, this power within this, this womb, this power just is the word power is the buzzword for this episode right now, because that's exactly what it is. When you are someone that is living sexually free, that power that comes with that is, is, is incredible. Just so incredible. So, you know, breaking through these societal norms, really examining the pressures that and the stereotypes that you have experienced in your life and really asking yourself, how have these things influenced your perception of sexuality? So if growing up you were someone, maybe maybe you had sex at a young age or maybe a friend of yours had sex at a young age, like middle school or early in high school, and people in school started calling her or you a slut. What message did that send to you? I know from my experience, when I had a friend that had sex and was sexually active at a young age, everyone started calling her a slut. And and then on the other spectrum, you had other girls that weren't doing anything sexually and they were prudes. So it was like, where, where on this spectrum, where is this, where's the safe spot? If I'm not doing anything, I'm a prude. If I'm doing something, I'm a slut. And I, for me personally, I didn't want to be either of those things. <laughs> Had I been called a slut in my life? Yes. Have I been called a prude in my life? Yes. It's a confusing fucking time, especially at that age. And especially for women, we're on the verse, ver, uh, reverse side, then you know, they are, they're, aha, they're, yeah, go bro. When they're having sex, uh, when have you ever heard a man being called a prude? I, I would be willing to guess probably never. Um, but really looking and thinking back on your experiences in life. And I'll plug this. One of the offers that I have available on my website at rachelmain.com is the sex timeline exercise. And this is something, this is a whole exercise that I walk you through and you actually get a call with me after you complete your timeline to be able to dive in deeper to your timeline um, and have me have my eyes on it to really see and pull out those experiences in your life. I'm going through this in depth right now with one of my newer one-on-one clients and it's still every time it just amazes me of the light bulb moments that people have during this experience. So looking through your life experiences and who are the people in your life that have, you know, proven to be challenges to you when it comes to your sexuality? Who is it that, who are the people or what are the lies that you are still holding on to from previous life experiences that are still standing in your way today to living a sexually free life? And really being able to look on those and do some journaling, do some, some processing around that. You know, I have the episode on EFT tapping. We have an episode coming up on essential oils. We have all of these different resources on this podcast to help you be able to process through these things. 
And if you want somebody to be there along this path with you, if you're really wanting to take a deeper dive and a look into your sexuality and tap more into your sexual freedom, please let's chat. Please use my link and let's set up a consultation call and I can share with you programs or coaching or or everything that I have that I think could benefit you on this. Because I'll tell you, living living a life of, of sexual freedom is a joy. I see, I see it in myself. I see it in other sex educators, other friends of mine that are living a pleasure-filled life. You look at my friend, Jordan Donnell. You look at my friend, um, Lauren in Oh Yeah Coaching. You, you just look at these women that are living full fuck yes lives. Um, Alan that we had on the podcast, specifically talking about a pleasure-filled life. Recent episode I did with Joe Miller, looking at her and how she's living life and just these women that are coming through and just showing the fuck up for themselves. That is another part of this, of, of the sexual freedom. It, it is, it, it is such a beautiful, beautiful thing to be able to see. So a piece of your living in your sexual freedom is also being able to communicate what your sexual boundaries are. And it is uberly important to have clear communication and to have consent in your sexual relationships. So having, again, as I said, these depth conversations with your partner, doing things maybe like the want, will, won't list, which actually you can get as a masterclass on my website as well. The how to create the sex life you both crave that walks you through doing the want, will, won't list or completing the erotic blueprint quiz together, completing the BDSM test together. Um, These are great tools to be able to help you start to identify what some of these boundaries are and boundaries as in, yes, like this is a yes for me and boundaries as in this is a no for me, because I think oftentimes we hear the word boundaries and we think, oh, these are, these are just my, my red lights. Right. But boundaries are in definition stating very clearly what you're okay with and what you're not okay with. So it's not always about the the negatives, but utilizing some of these tools to start this conversation within your partnership, or if you're a single person listening to this, using these tools for yourself. There's no one that says that if you're single, you can't take a BDSM test or you can't take the erotic blueprint or do a want, will, won't list. This, the, these are these are things that you can do if you're in um, a partnership or not. So, you know, discussing within your partnership as well what what consent looks like and what negotiation can look like within those safety parameters is is going to help you tremendously. And you know, promoting sexual freedom for both people that are involved in partnerships. This is not just about women living sexually free. This is not just about men living sexually free because women and men along the way, we have both received our our bouts of shame, right? Like it, it is likely shown up in different ways, but I'm not I'm not categorizing men out. I'm not cluing them out and to say like, oh, men have never experienced shame. Men cannot live sexually free. Fuck yes, men can live sexually free too. So when you, and another thing like, Following accounts, if you're if you're looking into sexual freedom and this is something that you're wanting to explore more of for yourself, checking out the accounts, I've already named a few on here, but following co- accounts and, and people that you see that you admire that are in your eyes living sexually free. So place in places also that advocate for for sexuality. So an, another account that is coming up for me is um is safe slut. She is a woman I've had on the podcast previously that um, is is a positive for herpes. And she has a very sex positive account focusing on uh, helping people that have herpes disclose and have safer sex and and still have mind blowing sexual interactions. And and she would be a person that I would say is somebody that lives sexually free. Um, Who else? Yeah, this Joe, this Joe Miller, she was just talking on her social media today about how, when is the last time that you have talked to your pussy? When is the last time that you asked her how she was feeling? When's the last time that you just cupped your hand over her and sent her love and appreciation and gratitude for everything that she has carried you through? You know, she talks a lot about tapping into your pussy power and a lot about feminine energy. And I'm really excited actually to do her free masterclass that she has available. 
Um, she, we have a podcast coming up with her too. So make sure that you're subscribed to this show so you don't miss anything. But really, again, you know, following these sex positive accounts, following a people that you see that are talking openly about sex, that are expressing openly about sex and sexuality, these are these are things that can also be inspiring and educational for you when it comes to wanting to live and embrace sexual freedom even more. So this is seeming to be a shorter little mini sode. I think that's perfect for this holiday week. I almost skipped podcasting this week, but I was like, you know what? No, we need we need to talk sexual freedom. I'm just I'm feeling called to this. Let freedom ring. Let the glitter bell ring. <laughs> no, that just came up. <laughs> the glitter bell ring. Oh, that was good. Um but yeah, it, it just I'm encouraging you all to embrace your sexuality. Take a look at what does your sexuality look like right now? What does pleasure look like for you right now in your life? And not just sexual pleasure. How often are you bringing pleasure into your day-to-day life? And rate that on a scale of one to 10. If you're at a two, what can you do to bump yourself up to a three? And take this one step at a time. I'm not saying, you know, again, this is a this is a process. It's not something that's going to happen overnight. You're not going to go from somebody that's a two to all of a sudden starting an OnlyFans and posting nudes, right? Like that that's likely not going to happen. And I want to state that sexual freedom looks different for every single person. So if, you know, exhibitionism is not is not high on your list, starting an OnlyFans page is is probably not for you. If voyeur is high on your list, maybe you get on OnlyFans because you want to see people or if voyeur is high on your list, maybe you start to look at more ethical porn like like Belessa.co. That's my favorite porn resource. So thinking about what can you do to start adding more sexual freedom and start paving your way and building up to that. Listening to erotica, reading erotica, listening to books about sex. This Just this week, I just started uh, Vanessa and Vanessa and Xander Marin's book called Sex Talks. Incredible, incredible resource. I'm literally going to buy myself a hard copy because just listening to audiobook, I'm like, oh my God, I need to write this down. I need to write this down. So I'm like, I've said that so many times to myself already. I'm like, I just need to get the hard copy of the book at this point. Um, And I love their account, their YouTube, their their, uh, Instagram. They're amazing. Vanessa is a sex therapist herself. Um, So yeah, so I hope this was helpful for you. Again, short and sweet episode today, but sexual freedom just again, getting to this place where you can feel sexually free. You, You feel that freedom in your body. You feel that power within your body to open up to your partner during sex, ask for what you want during sex, have conversations about sex on a regular basis, explore your curiosities. If you're curious about BDSM, about anal sex, about dirty talk, about shibari rope tying, whatever it is, exploring that and and getting shame the fuck out of your way and getting guilt out of your way and judgment and fear of judgment. Like, getting all of that out of your way and just doing what feels right and what feels best for you, that is your route. That is that is your path to sexual freedom. And I want this for everybody. I want this for everybody that is listening right now. So again, if you're intrigued by this episode, you can go to rachelmain.com. You can check out some of the resources that I have under the work with me tab. Um, sign up for the newsletter, subscribe to this podcast. I mean, these are all things that you can do to take steps towards living more sexually free. And I would love to do coaching with you. Love, love, love. I have openings right now for the summer um, for my one-on-one coaching or for my couples coaching. So if that feels right for you and you want to explore more of that, let's jump on a call again together and see how how I can help and what what coaching could look like for you. All right, y'all. I hope everyone has a wonderful, wonderful fourth or you had a wonderful fourth. Have some fun. I'm hoping that the rain holds out here in Michigan for us so that we can have a good time ourselves. And uh, I'll catch you on the next episode. What do we got coming up next week? Ooh, okay, yeah. Next week is the episode with Joe Miller. So embodying feminine energy. That's what we're talking about. So definitely, definitely tune into next week's episode. It's going to flow perfectly into today's conversation. And 
yeah, as always, thank you so, so, so much for continuing to listen to the Owning Your Sexual Self podcast. I cannot thank you enough. And I love all of you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'll see you next time.